language and there are seven of them you can't say on television what a ratio that is 399,993 to seven <laughs> they must really be bad you know the seven don't you that you can't say on television shit piss fuck cunt cocksucker motherfucker and tits huh <laughs> those are the heavy seven those are the ones that'll infect your soul Curve your spine and keep the country from winning the war. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. Wow. And tits doesn't even belong on the list, you know? It's such a friendly sounding word. Sounds like a nickname, right? Hey, tits, come here, man. Hey, tits. As you know, those, those words still can't be said. On television, I've tried. <laughs> But those seven words made George the only American comedian whose work resulted in a major Supreme Court ruling. Carlin was a comedian, but his purpose was dissent. Carlin also knew that the survival of the American democracy depends less on the size of its armies than on the capacity of its individual citizens to rely, if only momentarily, on the strength of their own minds. My dad got such a thrill knowing that his whole routine was typed out verbatim into the Supreme Court records. <laughs> and that someone in front of the justices actually read, shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. It was one of the biggest joys of his life. The reason I bring up words is because uh, my father was an author and a writer, and he really felt that he was a writer first, a performer second. George's fourth and last book, uh, Last Words, I was lucky enough to be the co-author co on. He wanted to tell, as he put it, the story of his art, how he went from a ninth grade dropout to a major artist and a major intellect. Tony and I are now going to give you a little selection from these books. Short takes. Although it's untrue that rubbing a toad causes warts, it does give the toad a hard-on. When you step on the brakes, your life is in your foot's hands. <laughs> Meow means woof in cat. George Washington's brother was the uncle of our country. As far as I can tell, jack shit and diggle squat are roughly the same amount. You know, there ought to be at least one round state. I don't understand why prostitution is illegal. Selling is legal, fucking is legal. So why isn't selling fucking legal? Thank you. Thank you. I I'm going to briefly just give you a little of me about George Collin. I, for some reason, have had George Collin in my life since I was little. My mother introduced me to him. She woke me out of a dead sleep to come see him on some show. And from then on, it was, uh, it was love. It was love and understanding that if he could walk such a, a funny line, that it might be possible for me. And I remember my first big, like, grown-up feeling laugh. And I saw George Carlin on Saturday Night Live, and he said, um, what do dogs do on their day off? They can't lay around, that's their job. And I just, something went off, and I just couldn't stop laughing. The idea was born in my head at that moment. I want to be funny. I want to be a comedian. The night that I watched Carlin at Carnegie, I was absolutely reborn. George opens with, have you ever noticed that the people who are against abortion are people you wouldn't want to fuck in the first place? <laughs> my father was cracking up. My mother was looking sternly at my father, and I was like, what's abortion? And she was like, great, Don, great. You tell him what abortion is, and left the room. And when she came back 20 minutes later, George was into the Rice Krispies bit. And suddenly the same woman was like getting into the Rice Krispies bit. And suddenly I got it. This was a man who could work intelligently, and he could work for stupid people, like mom. 
In my early 30s, I began to fear that I simply wasn't funny enough to die young. And right around this time, a friend made me aware that George Carlin was going to be at a party at a nightclub very near to my home. I put a videotape of my stand-up reel in a manila envelope with a letter that said, you're one of my heroes, I love your work, I hope you'll enjoy some of mine. And I dropped it off at the nightclub. And one afternoon, the phone rang, and I picked it up. And a voice said, hi, Dylan, this is George Carlin. Listen, I just looked at your tape. I'm sorry it took me so long. It's been sitting on top of my VCR for six months. You're really very funny, and I thoroughly enjoyed looking at your work. It was a small thing for him to call me. It was a slightly larger thing for him to call Letterman on my behalf, but it cost him nothing, and it meant a great deal to me. It's become pretty clear to me that immortality is not earned with one-liners, no matter how clever they are. Immortality is earned with a generosity of spirit toward those around us. It's earned with a kind gesture. Thanks for being here with me for a little while tonight. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much.